Hi students, all of you a very good afternoon. We will be going for Virginia Woolf, Henry Fielding and Charles Dickens. जो आपका नया सिलेबस है उसके हिसाब से ड्रामा प्रोज फिक्शन नॉन फिक्शन एंड पोइट्री सो वर्जीनिया वुल्फ का पहले नाम था वर्जीनिया स्टीफन वर्जीनिया स्टीफन एंड शी वॉज बोर्न इन लंडन एंड शी वॉज वन ऑफ द यंगर चिल्ड्रेन ऑफ अ वेरी डिस्टिंग लिटरेरी फैमिली हर फादर वॉज लेस्ली स्टीफन हु वॉज लेस्ली स्टीफन ही वॉज अ ऑथर ऑफ अ क्रिटिकल biographical and a writer of philosophical essays and a friend of many great scholars and many uh, men of letters of that time and that brilliant period of english literature and this stephen family who used to live in their london house somewhere in hyde park they must have resembled the ramses in to the lighthouse if you have read to the lighthouse by virginia wolf and virginia wolf in her fiction in her novels and her diary seems very much at ease with the younger people of both the sexes male and female and the connection of virginia wolf with her sister veniza v a n e s s a was very close and with her brother thoby t h o b y and a sudden tragedy happened that his brother her brother died at the age of 25 while he was in a holiday in greece in 1906 and this basically had a profound effect on the work of virginia wolf now Leslie Stephen the father of Virginia Woolf was somewhere around 50 years of age when Virginia Stephen was born and the great days of his life was over although he had already published his history of english thought in the 18th century the name of this uh, book is history of english thought in the 18th century and the second book is the science of ethics and he still wrote daily methodically in his study at the top of the books top of the house all where all over you will find books scattered around him and she recalls how he would take his hat and a stick in his hand calling for his dog and his daughter and he would go for a walk into some garden and this habit of walking through the parks to the squares to the streets of london established an early you can say uh, the communication uh, with her father and that too remained persistent for years together of mrs wolf's occupations and the fruitful ideas of her work the background of her novels and yes the subject of one of her most charming essays which she has written and the name of that essay is street haunting s t r e e t street h a u n t i n g street haunting virginia wolf in her memoirs m e m o i r s she has stressed the atmosphere of freedom in their family life and what is this freedom the right to think one's own thoughts and to follow one's own pursuits and to choose one's own profession that is the liberty she did not like to see women smoking but the freedom his daughter and in the other ways was worth thousands thousands and of you can say the commitments which she used to get from her father visitors at the house of hyde park where they used to live were many many visitors used to come and they were all distinguished men of letters a great name i would tell you james russell lovell james russell lovell he was like a godfather to virginia thomas hardy when mrs wolf 
had tea with him in 1926 recalled seeing her or it might have been my sister but he thought it was me in my cradle so this was a quote which was written by her henry james henry james was a frequent guest of this stephen family when the children were young and james henry james felt somewhat some years later when he saw these stephen girls at a place known as rye r y e that they and their friends were not quite up to the lady like standard which belonged to the hyde park gate but they were very lady like when leonard wolf first met them first met them at a tea party in their brother thobby's room at cambridge after some time what happened that death of her mother when virginia was only 13 years of age was the first of the losses that affected virginia wolf deeply at the core of her heart and uh, during basically virginia wolf or you can say first virginia stephen her half sister there was a half sister uska naam tha stella duckworth she took charge of the household for several years kyunki mother ki death ho gayi thi till veniza stephen was old enough and then stella married dying soon after the birth of her first baby she also died jab pehli pehle baby ka janam hua and how virginia herself was affected at this very moment she recalls in her diary she was in a habit of writing diary soon after the death of roger fry and she came to regard life as an arbitrary trickster the second in line is henry fielding henry fielding was born in 1707 and educated at eton E T O N. He was educated in Eton. Born in 1707. And Eton is a place where he acquired a working knowledge of the classics. And he began his literary life as a dramatist. But his best work. and he himself is known as a great novelist his tom jones his best work is considered to be tom jones and after his first marriage in 1734 he went to live in a country where he spent his money extravagantly keeping open house for the countryside and on returning to london he earned a livelihood as a journalist but did not find his true field till he turned a novelist bahut kuch kiya usne lekin it was all not his cup of tea until and unless he became a novelist where he felt satisfied he became a barrister he became a magistrate in 1753 he fell ill and journeyed to lisbon where he died in 1754 now we will directly come to the works of henry fielding 1740 joseph andrews joseph andrews a novel written in imitation of cervantes and in ridicule of Richardson's Pamela never before had life been exhibited in England with so much sense of character so clear in insight into motives so keen an interest so this is joseph andrews written in imitation of cervantes and in ridicule of richardson's pamela then in 1743 he wrote miscellanies 
miscellaneous miscellaneous means miscellaneous and this miscellaneous was written in three volumes and the third volume contained his life of jonathan wild life of jonathan wild which was full of movement full of vivid pictures of low life and in this work henry fielding polished irony polished irony which achieved a triumph and presents a picture of almost perfect diabolism this i read it somewhere in a book which is a statement written by walter rele about uh, about this um, uh, about henry fielding uh, about this uh, life of jonathan wild rele ne walter rele ne kahi pe ye kaha hai ki fielding ki jo ye polished irony hai achieves a triumph and presents a picture of almost perfect diabolism now 1749 tom jones tom jones ka pura naam hai ya sub title hai history of a foundling f o u n d l i n g history of a foundling and this is his uh, you can say the masterpiece and where its object was to show life at is really is jaisi life hai usko waisa dikhana uska object tha despite its coarseness it is a manly book full of sturdy wisdom and it is a epic of youth but a master by comedy now we will talk about henry fielding ke upar influence kaise kaise the how he became henry fielding so exactly the important influences on henry fielding are not very difficult to trace why because they are all evident in their works as well as in his own utterances and the main influence were of drama of journalism of classical knowledge and the reading of so many authors as i told you he was initially a dramatist though he did not succeed well on the stage as compared to becoming a, and writing novels and becoming a novelist ye yahan pe dhyan dene wali baat hai it has to be noted here that his characters derive from comedy of humors and it is his dramatic experience which enables fielding to create the vital minor characters kyunki itne characters usne produce kiye hain but the comedy of humors jo technique hoti hai comedy of humors ki also is limiting the fielding's scope fielding ka scope to bada hai लेकिन कॉमेडी ऑफ ह्यूमर जो टेक्निक है वो उसके स्कोप को लिमिट कर देती है एंड द इंग्लिश नॉवेल ओज अ ग्रेट डील टू जर्नलिज्म व्हाई? बिकॉज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फील्डिंग वाज हिमसेल्फ अ जर्नलिस्ट एंड यस हिज क्रिटिकल एसेज व्हिच एक्चुअली इंटरपर्स द चैप्टर्स ऑफ हिज नॉवल आर इन द ट्रेडिशन ऑफ द टाइप ऑफ आर्टिकल्स विच अपियर इन पीरियोडिकल्स ऑफ दैट टाइम ही वॉज अ मैन ऑफ एटीन सेंचुरी he was like other writers influenced by the earlier writers and besides the writers of the classical antiquity some continental writers also influenced fielding he called his novel a comic epic in prose fielding's novels show the various factors which influenced him as a writer though he gets the credit for having formulated a new species of prose writing he could not have achieved what he did without the help of his illustrious 
predecessors on the continent nor can we ignore the major influence of the theater and his classical knowledge on his writing fielding ki jo life ke prati philosophy thi matlab his philosophy of life i think it should also be understood by the english students kyunki fielding ek aise age mein rehta tha which was basically moral in outlook and at the same time it was an age brought about a synthesis between emotionalism and rationalism fielding is quite representative of of this attitude and his philosophy is guided by the common sense morality of the age fielding on the other hand lays stress on the native impulse the goodness of heart the individual's conformity to his better self and uses a novelist prestige in judging his characters by his, by their motives clear so we can sum up his philosophy like this that fielding's philosophy was based on the feeling of goodness towards others and it is not surprising that such a free vision of life did not meet with the approval of formal moralists like richardson and dr johnson etc his philosophy included a healthy and common sense view of morality and religion charles dickens he was born in 1812 uh near a place known as portsmouth p o r t s m o u t h uske father basically navy mein navy ke office mein uh, he was a clerk and where he was born that is in uh this thing portsmouth the family moved away to some other place when he was only a child of uh, i think uh, 1812 yes was he was only 3 years old and his father was promoted somewhere and his father went to some other place where he was promoted and the family mein jo log the especially kuch servants the jo dickens ko बचपन में हॉरीफाइंग स्टोरीज सुनाया करते थे दे यूज टू टेल हॉरीफाइंग स्टोरीज एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दीज हॉरीफाइंग स्टोरीज नाइट मेयर्स उसको आते थे चार्ल्स डिकेंस को एंड चार्ल्स डिकेंस के जो अपने खुद के ऑटोबायोग्राफिकल नोट्स हैं फ्रॉम दोज नोट्स वी गेट मेनी ग्लिम्सेस ऑफ हिम एज अ चाइल्ड एज अ बॉय वेयर he used to visit to the theaters he used to buy books and he used to be into the 18th century fiction especially the picarex and the sentimental moreover his father jiska naam tha john dickens he was living cons- consistently beyond his means and due to so many things he was into a lot of debt and charles as a boy he was ignorant of the desperate circumstances of his family and ultimately found them living in one of the poorest of streets isko bhi dekhe kehte hain kismat or vicissitudes in life finally आगे चल करके उसके फादर को अरेस्ट कर लिया गया फॉर डेट एंड प्रिजन में उसको बंद कर दिया नाउ द फैमिली पोजीशन वाज क्वाइट क्रिटिकल देर वाज नो मनी टू बाय इवन ब्रेड एंड सो दिस लिटिल बॉय वाज फोर्स्ड टू टू गो थ्रू हिज प्रेशियस बुक्स वन बाय वन बट वन मोर एक्सपीरियंस विच वॉज मोर बेटर वॉज येट टू कम and humiliating also that it continued to uh, haunt him in his mind throughout his life 
his parents found a job for him in warren's blacking factory owned by a relative for six months in utter despair charles still little more than a child worked in the dirty rat infected old house sticking labels on the blacking bottles and this was the first raw impact of life on the sensitive nerves of a boy who had lived in a dream world so you can very well understand the psychological turmoil uh, turmoil of a little boy who was so innocent and this little boy experiencing a sense of complete betrayal by those from whom he expected love protection and shelter and now he has nothing in himself when his father left prison charles thought that this would be something of meaningful and but the family were in no hurry to take the boy away from the gainful employment and he remained in the factory until his father quarreled with the relatives who owned it and the boy was removed from there even then the mother was in favor of patching up the quarrel and sending the boy back charles would never forget throughout his life this attitude of his own mother and sometimes years later when he was a man he always tried to avoid the locality where that particular factory was situated and he never forgave his mother for this attitude for his child so that was the painful experiences of his early life and still a lot to go when he left the factory he resumed his schooling but the mischief had been done in the depths of his nature a split had occurred ek kahin pe ek jhatka aa chuka tha ek sensitive bachcha ek delicate bachcha jisko ki aise nerve shattering experience mein dala gaya tha and that could have only been endured by somebody tough and obstinate and the vision of the world of these grim deformed uh, exaggerated caricatures a world full of horrid images impressed itself permanently upon the soul and mind of the child and it was thus that he continued to see the victorian scene the loving beauty he had during his childhood been forced into contact with the seamer side of life with a lot of dirt with a lot of squalor with a lot of shame and with a lot of humiliation always the disgust the hopelessness the pessimism all 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 were there with him as a gift and he had also seen the sordid underworld of london inhabited by men and women deceased in mind body where the victims of some vast incomprehensible system were oppressed and destroyed so this was the the nurturing you can say and the vicissitudes of of charles dickens as a boy when he grew up jab dickens ne school chhod diya apna uski umar thi keval 15 saal so at the age of 15 he took a job somewhere in the firm of solicitors and there he proved himself useful but soon he realized that this kind of work could only be like a temporary phase in his life for a young man of so much energy and ambition so office mein kaam karne ke baad he started learning shorthand evening mein and acquired proficiency a lot in a lot many months so he left the solicitors office and became a professional shorthand writer so he got a job in the court of law where he acquired much of his knowledge of the intricacies of law as well as his familiar uh, he became familiar with a lot of legal characters who are found in abundance in his novels har cheez ke piche koi reason hota hai iske jo characters hain you will find many uh, character legal characters the reason is that he was himself into that field 
somewhere you can say the autobiographical note in the novels of Charles Dickens.